All right, how's it going, guys? D here, FTL Nerd Talk. I got a special guest here today. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, man? My name is Ritz Sensei. I'm from the Blurred Corner. Um, on my podcast, I do everything anime related. Anime is my core focus. I talk about video games every now and again, but anime is basically why I'm here. Your bread and butter is anime. Yep. So you yep. you and Crunchyroll, you guys have like a very lovely, lovely relationship. Crunchyroll, Funimation, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. If there's anime, I'm on it. Funimation. You know, when I'm more of an old head when it comes to anime. Yeah. Um, so okay. I was I was around like I was around anime back in like the uh, mid to late eighties and hardcore in the nineties or around the two thousands and whatnot when Toonami was doing this thing. Yeah. That's when I that's when I started like like that Peter off when it came to anime. And Funimation was never the thing because they gave us the worst dub for Dragon Ball Z. Like I'm not sure if you're a big Dragon Ball fan or not, but that, that Everybody's dub, a Dragon Ball fan. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people who say they aren't Dragon Ball fans are closeted Dragon Ball fans. I don't know why I hear you. I think those folks are just lying to themselves. Like, but I had to cover all these streaming services because nowadays certain animes are contracted with certain services. So something I want to watch on Funimation isn't on Crunchyroll. So it's right. forcing me to spend the extra couple of dollars a month. They're doing the same thing that uh, Netflix used to do, like when they had like a license to a certain property, they only had it for a couple of years or so, then like they go shift off to somewhere else, and those things just keep bouncing around and bouncing around. That's why I have Hulu because I wanted to watch Futurama, so I hear you. Oh man, Bob's Burgers is my thing. <laughs> yeah, that's your go-to, right? On. Yeah, <laughs> love Bob's Burgers. I can watch a rerun all day. All right, <laughs> ditto. I'm not gonna lie to you, ditto. Uh, I'm actually rewatching season eight right now, so. Okay. Uh, I haven't watched that many times, so I like I, I get a chance to rewatch it fresh because I want to see it once, and I was like preoccupied while it was happening. But uh, let's get this started. All right. Uh, first news of the day: The Boys season two has a release date. Finally, it's uh, it's coming out. Season two starts. I had this date. I was like, no, it's away from it. Collider was the one who originally reported this can't find a date day's gone for me so I'm oh. here in September 4th that's what that's you have yeah that's, that's what I'm tracking what, I, what I've been seeing online at least well I appreciate that you know it man like I, I'm looking at the article, I have, the article I have in front of me I can't see anything so there's no date whatsoever but September yeah but it's here they got promo pictures they got trailers like it's uh did you watch the first season of the boys I did I only watched the first episode. I couldn't get past that. I you haven't watched this episode? Dude, I watched, That's it? I, watched, I read the comic book, and, okay. <laughs> and the comic book's pretty damn intense. And I watched that first episode, like, okay, yeah, this is def- definitely not for me. I'm big into hero worship, so like, watching heroes being deconstructed like that, like very, uh, very um, Watchmen style, Yeah, it's hard for me to watch. It's difficult. But if you think about it, that was such a system in the United States, such as Heroes, it would act exactly like that. Yeah, I don't need that. That's not why. That's not why <laughs> I read comics. It's not for that. <laughs> like I, I read comics, so I don't have to see that. So yeah. But uh, that, that's like the big thing for me. So yeah, season two, everyone's really excited. It's gonna be on Amazon. Um, the trailer's out. You can find it on YouTube. I, maybe I'll put it in the description. I, I really, I rarely ever do that, but this time I probably will. What do you got? What story do you have? So, um, as everybody may know, may or may not know, I'm the anime guy, of course. Um, and we're getting ready to switch into the, the summer animes, and we got a bunch of um, season twos coming back, coming back. And which one are you most know, excited for? Me season, personally, yeah, season two eyes, yeah. Re zero. What's that about? It's basically about this guy Subaru, so they call him his name. Um, Somehow he dies in his in our world, then he's brought back to life in a it's called a fantasy world or whatnot. Okay. But um, so he wakes up. He thinks he has has these cool powers and whatnot, which he really doesn't. Um, the only power he has is he can return by death. So every time he dies, he starts over from a certain point. <laughs> what? Yeah. So this guy keeps dying and dying and dying and dying. He feels everything, remembers the pain. So he developed like, this strong sense of PTSD from it. and um, Oh, he starts to go crazy from it. Yeah. 
No way. It, it's pretty good. And that sounds I, pretty. That sounds pretty nice, actually. I could probably it, get on board with that. It's been a while. I think it came out. I don't know that year it came out, but it was came out a while ago. And it's one of those anime that's like oh, season two, and here we are. It's it's not really a shonen jump. It's more like like the Yu Yu Hakusho style or Tenchi Muyo type animes with a with a dark twist um, to it. Yeah, it's it's a shonen, I believe, because it's is, like is the, it a shonen? The protagonist is a teen, no mention of parents. You know, the same shonen trope, <laughs> but it has like a, a dark, a dark thriller feel to it. Okay, very psychological, I'm guessing, there, right? Yeah, and gotcha. something, something else I'm looking forward to. Um, I don't know, people, how many of your listeners read manhwa? Manhwa is basically the Korean version of a manga, and couple years ago, Crunchyroll had assumed the license of Webtoons, the number one um, manhwa distributor, and to the point where now they're making anime. Like Last season was Tower of God, 13 episodes, finished up. It's one of my favorite manhwa I've been reading for years. To oh, see Mon- it finally- manhwa, M-A-N-H-W-A, gotcha. All yeah. right. Now, I never heard of it before. I didn't know Korea made made manga. Is it North Korea or South Korea? It's got to be South Korea, right? It's South Korea, yeah. Right, it has to be. North Korea doesn't have electricity. They, they would not let you do that in <laughs> North Korea, yeah. <laughs> but so, go on. So as far as like, these webtoons go that Crunchyroll are now making animes for, there's, there's a whole list of them. But the last season, Tower of God, I've been reading for a while. Love the way they ended it. Um, the manhwa itself is on season three. So that's like about almost 500 chapters after the first season ended. So I'm looking forward to re, to, re, to animate season two pretty soon, which may go down as one of the best animes ever. But another one that I'm looking forward to is very popular. Also manhwa or it. is it like... Also, okay. also manhwa. You, you, you'll notice a lot of manhwas are like Chinese and Korean properties. Okay. Is, are they are they pretty big? Cause like again, this is my first time hearing that word. Like manhwa, are they are Chinese and Korean anime like become like a thing? Are they become like competition for Japanese anime? No, uh, there's some Chinese anime out there, okay. but it doesn't get as much rep as um the J- Japanese. Yeah, gotcha. But it's out there. But to have like Crunchyroll work together with the Korean studios to make these animes, like the people who are animating the actual episodes are okay. the creators of the manhwas. So like they, they put their fingers inside this and like they distributed it directly through country roll is what you're saying. Yeah. Wow. So that's, and I think, uh, re zero is also on country roll right now. Right. Yep. Oh man. So like now you got me, now you got two animes I can go and watch. When does it, when does this come out? Do you know? Tower of God. I mean, the, the God of High School, the newest one, comes right. out on um, April fifteenth. It came out April fifteenth. That's Tower of God, but God of High School is the second one. I'm sorry, oh. I get them mixed up. No worries. Yeah, Tower of God just finished. I loved it. You'll probably you'll enjoy it, and you'll understand why everybody hates this certain person in that particular <laughs> anime. But um, the God, God of, of High, High School. School. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, that starts. I want to say on the sixth. Of July, and it's tournament based. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Ooh. And what gets me is like the main character, Jin Mori. He's based on the the same lore as Goku is. So very stoic, very love, very much loves to fight, but uh, not too bright. Like the extended pole, the Monkey King, all that kind of stuff. Oh, really? They yeah. do from that. Yep. Dude, that's cool. See, now I got three I can watch. And, like, when this comes out, I'll probably watch that one, too. All right, so T- Tower of God and God of High School and ReZero. Anything else you got for us? No Boo Burrito or Burrito? Burrito? <laughs> Burrito? I'm not really watching Burrito. that right now. I'm gotcha. waiting until it, wait it gets more into the meat and potatoes. Oh, is it more just dialogue-based, like, learning like learn who, the, who the characters are? Yeah, a lot of fillers. Gotcha. Um, they started around the same time the manga started. But um, the problem is the manga comes out once a month. And they drop episodes weekly. Ooh, so, so a lot of fillers. Getting to know the characters after Naruto, you know. Is it gonna? You think it's gonna be like another One Piece or maybe another Bleach with all these fillers they got inside of it? Or uh, I'm a One Piece stand. 
out of 930 episodes, there's only 100 filler episodes for One Piece. <laughs> so it's not as heavy filler episode as Naruto, where Naruto is like 43% filler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. And Bleach was, uh, Bleach was like at least 45% filler. Oh, from, yeah. From my understanding. They had like, like the episodes that never were like, you know, full on action were good, but like they had a lot of filler episodes. I had to I go agree. find a chart. I had to find a chart online just so I wouldn't get any filler episodes because I just I couldn't do fillers anymore. So you've seen Bleach before, right? Oh yeah, I haven't I haven't finished it. Let's put it that way. I know it's coming back. Okay, I was about to bring that up. Yeah, I know it's coming back. The final arc, yeah. It's uh, it's kind of intense, man. <laughs> like uh, the message boards and like all the blogs out there are going nuts for this this show coming back. It's been it's been a while. Nobody uh, thought it, it would happen. Because like I heard, I heard the ending like the way it ended, it was just a, a good flat out ending. You, like it didn't need a sequel or anything like that. But like, like somehow, some way, they're magically bringing this back. Are you are you inclined for it to come back, or will you just want rather it stay gone? Uh, I ha- so what they're doing is they're finishing the manga. Okay. So when the anime ended, that wasn't the end of the manga. So they're finishing up the last thousand war arc where we find out what happens to Aizen and everybody. Everybody's power ups, we're in a time skip. Everybody's older and stronger. Oh. I think it's called like the thousand year blood war or something like that. You can't really get too angry about like the anime being changing if the anime does change because that shit changed so many times in like the actual in the actual series. Like the anime changed a lot in the actual series. It is or the original animators coming back, do you know that or not? Yeah, it's, it's coming back. The original studio, wow. the original writer. Wow, this is gonna be this is gonna be epic. This is gonna be probably, I think it could probably be like as big as uh, as Super, but probably not as lingering as Super. That's my that's my final thought on that. Like it's gonna be as big as Super was, but it won't stay around like in people's minds and thoughts like Super did. I guess we'll see. So Super, it was crazy because like. The minute the episode dropped, you try to watch it on Crunchyroll, the right. servers are down. I heard about that, yeah. Oh, man. That's how you, man. Yeah, that's how you know you got some greatness right there. It's when, like, when, like, your servers go down on you on with, uh, with just an anime. And I heard, like, even through COVID, Dragon Ball Super is still making bank for some reason. Yeah, the manga's still going right now. And it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. I pop in every now and again. I'm not a consistent reader when it comes to Super's manga, but I like to pop in when I got some time, you know? Well, Toriyama is a bit long-winded, so, yeah, I don't really blame you too much for that, man. And everybody's a uh, Dragon Ball Z fan, so everybody's tuning in, but there's not <laughs> as many Bleach fans. I'll say that. I like how you like said everyone. Everyone is. Everyone, everyone. is. <laughs> I don't care between the is. ages of, damn, 40 and... 14? <laughs> 14. Yeah. Hardcore. You, you know who Goku is. That's, that's, you know what, I'll give you that. Like, it has that popularity to it that's very similar to, like, I don't know, stuff like Superman or, or like, the Avengers, stuff like that. You know what the, you know what these things are. You may not yeah. even know or care about it. Like, you may have never seen, like, a full episode, but you know what this is, and you know what it is when you see it. He was, exactly. a, he was a parade float last year, wasn't he? He and Vegeta? In the Macy's Parade? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, how you know you made right. it. That's how it was, right? <laughs> that's how you know you made it, exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. To, uh, we're going to come back to anime because, you know, we talk to the anime guy, we have to. But um, big comic book stuff. Harley Quinn has, like, two comic books that are coming out right now. Like, two okay. big ones. Um, there's this one comic book by Sean Murphy. It's called Batman White Knight. It's pretty much a story where... Um, it's a story where the Joker becomes sane and he completely reforms Gotham City when he's sane. He makes Batman public enemy number one. And then there was a sequel to that story, uh, also called White Knight, by the same by the same writer and artist, Sean Murphy. And now there's a there's a sequel to that coming out called Harley Quinn, again by Sean Murphy, in that same like pocket universe. So like they're doing like a whole like multiverse kind of thing, Elseworld kind of story. So that's one story that's coming out, and I believe that comes out in October. But the other story that's coming out is called Red, Black white and red and if any comic book fans out there a lot of people listen to your love comic books batman black and white are like some of the darkest stories that you've seen from batman and this story uh this story is harley quinn black white and red and i think the editor of it is andy curry i don't have any idea who's doing the work on this right now because it, 
they didn't tell me anything about his article. But I think that also comes out. Uh, nothing for that either. No information on that either. But it comes out this year, and it's only a buck. So it's only digital. It's a digital first. So okay. you don't have to worry about going like to like the newsstands or your local comic book shop, which sucks because the COVID is killing local comic book stores. So sorry for that. But yeah, it's digital. And the art looks amazing. So check it out. I'll put that in the descriptions also. What else do you have, man? I know you're not big into comic books. I won't like I won't bore you with having you <laughs> talk about like the details of it. So please, tell what else you got? It's crazy. I'm so fascinated with like other countries' work that I don't even take the time to read the work yeah. that's produced here. <laughs> maybe when you get a little bit older. You said you got you said you got three kids and two dogs. So, like maybe like when all that dies down on you, like you'll get some time just like to sit back and Check out some of the classics that are out there. Cause like Ameri- Hopefully. I love American like American superheroes, man. Me and Hero Worship is like, uh, what do they call hardcore anime fans? What do they call those guys? Weebs or... That's a negative. Like, nah, job, isn't it? Nah, nah, not really. Some people cl- claim themselves to be weebs, but um, Otakus is another one. Otaku, right, right, yeah. right. That's like, that's like hardcore everything Japan fans, yeah. right? Yeah, that's like everything Japanese otaku. Uh, yeah, I guess like hero worship is what I am. Like that's like the American version of my otaku. It's like it's hero worship, and I love me some heroes. And I, I do not love the boys. Like it's a it's a great story. Don't get me wrong, it's a great story. Like very captivating, very like deconstructing the superheroes. But like that's not what I want. <laughs> I don't need that in my life. It's too dark. It's too ominous. It just it's just some hardcore stuff to get like to digest. And if you can stomach that, more power to you. I just can't do it. You gotta watch it, man. You gotta at least give it a shot. <laughs> After all that, I still gotta check it out, huh? <laughs> for for podcast purposes, you know what I'm saying? To be able to criticize it fully, you have to to be able to, to compare it from the actual work of art to the TV show. You, you gotta watch it. <laughs> the work of I, art is pretty damn dark too, man. I thought it was good. I didn't I, I didn't see any previous content of it. I just turned it on because it was trending on right. uh, Amazon. On everything, really, yeah. Yeah, and. I was hooked. Ever since then, huh? Just like that? Yep, just like that. I've been waiting for it. Who's your favorite character so far? Huh? Who's your favorite character so far? (sighs) What's the kid's name? Um, The the one who just joined him? The kid that got confidence after his girlfriend got ran ran into. Right, right, right. right. I I forget his character name, but I know who you're talking about. It's funny. Like, uh, the dad is Simon Pegg, but the character, like, that, that character in the comic book, was uh, re- made to resemble Simon Pegg in the comics. I thought that was pretty cool. Like they got they got Simon Pegg to be the dad in the show, so like the main character. Because like they, I'm pretty sure like when they first came out with this comic book, I think it was Warren Ellis who did this, and he wanted he probably would have wanted Simon Pegg. To, but the fact that he's a dad, I find that I find that awesome. I love that. They gotta pay homage. Yeah, man. Right. I love stuff like that. Love it. Yeah, like my favorite character is the. The, the initial kid that right. the, the hate for the heroes. Uh, watches, Jack Quaid. Jack Quaid's kid is, uh, is Hugh Campbell is the name. That's the kid's name. Huey Campbell. Like I, I like to I like to watch his um descent as he stops idolizing these heroes and starts seeing them from what they are. Yeah, see, I, like that's that's part of part of the reason why I can't get into it because I don't need that. I want that veil. I want that veil to say closed. Don't open that fucking veil. Keep <laughs> keep it closed. <laughs> but Eric Kripke is a part of it. He's like an executive producer along with uh, Seth Rogen and most people who man, it was, uh, Eric Kripke is the guy who created Supernatural. Man. Yeah. So that's something. Like I love Supernatural. I'm still watching. I'm on season thirteen right now. Supernatural. I stopped a long time ago. <laughs> no hate. I completely but, understand. I stopped for a while too, but like it kept going. So I was like, screw it. I yeah, keep saying, it's going to be the last one. Then boom, another season comes out. No, no, no. Another season. Let's do another season. I, <laughs> I hear old boy, the tall guy, uh, he's doing, he's doing like a Texas Ranger. He's taking over Chuck Norris's bed. Is it Jason Ackles or? Uh, not Ackles. The, the other guy, Pedalaki. Jared okay. Pedalaki. He's doing, uh, he's doing Texas, Walker, Texas Ranger. Doing that TV show again? Oh. They bring that back? Oh yeah, doing a reboot. They rebooting everything. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Chuck Norris, so like I'm all in. So maybe I'll watch it. Hopefully, like like the the the, the, the partner of Walker is a cool casting call. So so hopefully I can get really into it this time. 
There's this one um show that used to come on around the same time with um Walker the Texas Ranger. Um and one of the guys in there was a monk. Kung Fu? I don't think it, I don't think it's called Kung Fu. The legend continues? You could be, you could probably say a name I still wouldn't know. <laughs> with uh Karen Dean? With uh, David Karen Dean? Uh, I, I have to Google it. Oh, you gotta look it up. Gotta go click, 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 click. <laughs> not not to show the monk like an actual kung fu monk you know yeah but it's probably, probably, it's probably kung fu the because it was originally a show that bruce lee came up with and then they casted david carradine inside of it and the show came back a while later and they call it kung fu the legend continues yes this is it yeah that's probably it this is it uh i can't watch that show because the executives stole that show from bruce lee and put david carradine as the main lead so i can't me personally, I can't watch it because of that. That's like that's like a, like a bullshit movie, man. Just, just my my grandma's loved this show, so it's like a nostalgia for me, you know. Oh, I watched it. I watched the original and like the the spinoff. I watched them both, and I, that's something I wouldn't mind seeing rebooted. You just like you just gave me like a beautiful idea to put out there into the sphere, man. I wouldn't mind seeing, like seeing that with like an Asian casting this time, though. I would love to see that. This is time to do it. Everybody's this is, this waking is, up right now. There you go, dude, right? All these shows are being rebooted. All the movies are being rebooted. I'm in. We're in yeah, a reboot era. There hasn't been a an original idea this year yet. <laughs> Ouch. I can't believe you just said that. You said that with a straight face, <laughs> dude. You didn't skip on your words or nothing. Because I'm telling the truth. Everything's being, <laughs> being remade. Well, you can't, you can't put that on, like, on the people. Like, like. It's all about what sells right now. And like a lot of people like buy stuff that they're familiar with because stuff that they're not familiar with, they won't put their they won't put two cents to it. Like have you watched Ford or Ferrari? Have you watched that movie? Nope. See exactly. I watched it. It wasn't terrible. Like I I don't think it should have been nominated for Academy Award, but it was like it wasn't bad. But that's what I'm talking about. Like like people don't put their money in stuff like that they don't, you know, they don't recognize. But did you watch the new Hellboy? Did you watch that one? I did not watch that one either. Oh, well, that's sad. That was like, it wasn't terrible. It was pretty good. People hated it, but I, I liked it. Like, uh, it had some good parts. It was cheesy. CGI everywhere. But it wasn't awful to watch. I feel like Hellboy is cheesy, period. I mean, that's like that's like the contents of Hellboy. Like, when you get invested in Hellboy, you strap it in for some cheese. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know, you get yourself, like, some hummus. You get yourself, like, some Gouda. You get yourself some Swiss. Like, you're, like, you're just, like, going to buckle up for it. That's pretty much what it is, right? True, true. <laughs> I'm not sure if you listen to lately. the show. Yeah, it's hard to do that. Like, we usually use our cues to remind us of what we watch lately. I'm not sure about you, but that's what I do. I use my Netflix cue, my Hulu cue. I haven't watched many movies. I've been watching this TV show called uh, Fire and Forge or Forge and Fire. It's like How's a black, that? It's like a blacksmithing show. Show about blacksmith. Okay. So they, they make they make blades, they make knives, they make these uh, old school swords and whatnot. I like it. It's like it's a time filler. It, it, it's to stop me from rewatching Boss Burgers and uh, American Dad and Futurama for like the fifteenth, sixteenth time. Blackish. I love Blackish too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I saw a couple of posts about that recently about how uh, people. <laughs> it was a funny post to me. People were talking about this show. Blackish, and they're talking about like colorism in media, and not realizing like that them calling attention to colorism when it comes like to black people in 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 media and cinema is in itself colorism, because like you're saying like these people are not black enough for you to be on TV, but like you know they try they try to speak their case about like unveil being cast as light skin, like how all the cast of Blackish or light skin also, and I get it. I do. It's not like we need more dark skin representation out there, like in Hollywood. But like the the call of colorism on like what by using the actors, it's not the best idea. I think like calling it out to like the executives is the best idea. That's me personally talking. Like put put like put the executives, put the studios on blast for doing this. So don't, don't call out the actors because it's not their fault. That they're light skinned, but like you know, they they see themselves as black or they are black, and like they get like scrutinized for this. Like it's not like on them for doing that. It's like it's on like like NBC, ABC, Fox, Hulu, Netflix. It's on them for doing that shit. Yeah, 
I, I can agree to to an extent, but oh, I also admire, huh? So we're about to have a conversation. I I just never gave it to that, that kind of serious thought. You know what I'm saying? It's Anthony Anderson, Tracy Ellis Ross. Um, Great actors, yeah. Yeah, well, like I the, mean, the whole show like like focus around that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's focused of a black family who has like Dre tells us Dre's Anthony in the show. Right. Tells us that um, he's from Compton and what he had to do to get to where he's at, and it's like a, it's like a window into a suburban black family who are trying to conform to society without doing it, and there's a lot of lessons that's being taught throughout this. I've met people who've like learned about Juneteenth from watching Blackish. Right. That might have been like the first TV show to publicly speak on it. And, that's, and talk and, about it. Have a whole show derived about it. And that's why I say, like, like we shouldn't like scrutinize the actors for this. We should scrutinize the companies for like for like not putting enough dark skinned people inside of TV shows. That's that's exactly what I mean by that. Like it's not, but like the the meme that I saw were like were like calling out all these actors and putting their names attached to it and like just making it seem like like you know it was the actors' fault for not being dark enough and being on these shows. That's crazy. Oh, wow. thought I lost you there for a second. Uh, I'm here. All right. I thought I lost you to avoid. Like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I was, I was in a deep thought right there. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Just trying to keep it light. Um, I think I had some more news, but the stuff I had is just not something I want to talk about because it's hardcore comic books, and you can't talk about comic books. So, And the TV show stuff is not doing the best. But there is like some stuff that's going on. You said you want to talk about some activism and stuff. Uh, TikTok, along with Facebook, is uh, pretty much putting like the kibosh on activism on their platform. They want their platform to be very happy-go-lucky, very not thinking about the, the protests, not thinking about like you know the the seriousness that happens in the world. That like if love you mostly follow like the the pages that I have. That's all I post about. That's all I talk about. Is that yeah. constantly. And Twitter is not giving me that problem. Twitter doesn't give me that problem whatsoever. But like Facebook, Instagram, and uh, TikTok, they are giving me that problem. Like a lot of my stuff isn't getting seen as much as the other stuff. Uh, I'm in Facebook jail right now on my page for the second time. No, actually, it's the third time in one month. I'm in Facebook jail. Man. Third time. Yeah, I got Easy. a hat trick. And then next time, the, a month long. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know. I've been, I've been there before. <laughs> that's from overposting though this time is for the content that I'm posting like trying to prove a point to people in Facebook Facebook is a company that has a lot of hypocrisy like they won't they won't uh, call out politicians they won't call out the president for saying like lies but my stuff puts me in jail and I don't understand that it doesn't make any sense to me. like so how can you how can you pick your battles with stuff like this but you won't pick your battle when it comes to fallacies I just I just don't get it I had to delete Facebook off my phone. I'm I'm getting to that mm-hmm. point. Like I'm I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I'm get, I'm li- I'm literally getting to that point where I'm just like, you know, just screw it. Like, why am I even doing this for Facebook? Facebook sucks. Uh, Instagram is decent, but uh, Facebook is just Facebook is just annoying. It's too much hassle. It's very conservative. Most of uh, I'm listening to the New York Times, and they were talking about how the most the most popular video was not the video of Zuckerberg telling everyone, hey, I'm going to donate all this money to all these black organizations to support Black Lives Matter. It was a video of Candace Owens, who is a, a black conservative who's a hardcore Trump supporter, talking oh, yeah. about how it was George Floyd's fault for getting shot in the first place. Like, it was his fault for getting him into that, for getting himself into that situation. And it was his fault because he was a criminal. That was the most watched video on YouTube, on, uh, on Facebook during the time that Zuckerberg made that statement about Black Lives Matter and donating money to places. So, like, that just tells me, like, like, Facebook doesn't care about me. They don't care about, they don't care about black folks. They don't care about, like, you know, they they don't have, like, a lot of people who are progressive thinking or free thinking and, like, in that that sphere. So, like, you just, why am I still here? Why am I still doing this? Go ahead, please. And once they find their token that's going to, say what they want. They plaster it everywhere. Those algorithms yeah. go crazy for it. Yeah. 
and Owens is that person. I don't know. I, I'm not gonna get too graphic like with my dislike for her, but the, I don't. I don't care for that person. She's a. Uh, um, I I can't. I just I can't say too much. I can't say too much. Russell, like an asshole. I can't be that person, and I won't be that person. But I just that, that I don't care. I don't care for Candace Owens at all. Me either. And I just met her. Like not not physically met her, but like physically like not physically. But I just heard of her through that video you're talking about. Oh yeah. That's the first time I've heard of her. Yeah. Great. So she got like and, even bigger of a voice right now. So all like the black folks who who side with her, we got like a divide with black people now. That's that's. That's awesome. That's exactly what we need. See, the reason I I seen it, because I just in time in the military, so I got, I'm friends with people that uh, if I didn't join the military, I probably wouldn't be friends with, you know? Oh, wow. And everybody shares their own, their, their own views on things. I like how you said views, not opinions, because hate is not an opinion. I don't care what anyone says. I understand people grew up where they grew up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like what they have is what they had. But the military, you're forced to interact with everybody, you know? Like, otherwise you'll die. Yeah. Yeah. And people just, either you'll die or they just, like, call it quits because they don't feel like they need to do this. I've had, I had a soldier tell me one time that, he, he like, hey, Sergeant Rich. I'm like, yeah. He was like, I'm not comfortable with you being my NCO. NCO is not commissioned officer. I was a sergeant at the time. He was a private. He was brand new. Coming to me. I was like, why is that? He said, I'm not too fond of black people. The fuck? Yeah. This private dude's like a month in the military telling me he don't like people who look like me. And as a leader, as a person, it's like, like cool. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Do you, I'll do me. But as a leader, it's like, I, I, you don't have to like me. My job is to take care of you, make sure you get home safely, make sure you're straight in everything, finances, personal life, make sure you got all the tools you need to succeed. As right. far as you not liking me because I'm black, that's a personal problem. That's, not, that's like a you business. Like, yeah, uh, that's a you future, problem. You gotta might want to keep that shit to yourself in the future, to be honest with you. And he was my soldier for like two and a half years. And um, his his tune changed. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. Please continue. I want to hear more of this. I mean, I... Of course, I'm a black person, black guy, right? I was in artillery, which is predominantly white, but I love how there's like black leadership everywhere. Like, all the <laughs> big star majors are all black, and but like when you look to your left and your right, you don't see them. You know what I'm saying? So, right. But um, the unit was predominantly predominantly white, and what I, this is what I can assume is a common thought, but it's not said out loud. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, once you first get to the military, they'll try you. Somebody will try you. They'll test you. They'll try to figure out how can I put that saying without sounding ignorant. It's gonna be hard to say it, but I don't know no other way to explain it. They want to see. They try to see what kind of black person you are, or or person in general. Gotcha. No, 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 no. In, in their person. perspective. In their perspective, what yes. kind of black person you are? Gotcha. Yes, they're 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 sing, they're, target, they're singling you out because you're black, and want to see what kind of black person you are. Like if you're from the hood or whatever, or if you're from goddamn Beverly Hills and just joined the military because you were bored. And the two reactions get treated differently. I'm not from Beverly Hills. I grew up in the hood, but that's not the mindset that I have. You know? Yeah, they don't. I'm, I'm still living. So, not my mindset at all. And I wasn't the person to like defy authority, but I was the person that's gonna let you know that you're not gonna talk to me any kind of way. <laughs> How'd you handle the situation? I just I I let know the first time, and that was the last time. Damn. Just like that. I got lucky. Yeah, I stayed in the unit for a very long time, so people already knew me, and the guys that came in got to know me, and things just got better in my platoon sergeant got switched out for a Spanish guy. Okay. And it's like, he, he just understood everything, you know what I'm saying? He, like, he gets it. Latinx, I'm assuming? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And smooth sailing. I made my sergeant rank, 
shortly after that, and since they've been trying to change the culture, because everybody comes from different backgrounds, different walks of life, and how long do you serve? I did eight years. Eight I got out years. like two years ago. Good gosh. Eight Good years, gosh. two deployments. I lived in Korea for a year. That was that was great. Is that how you heard about Minwa? Nah. Okay. <laughs> I heard I about. Did, I didn't bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about that after I got back. So I wasn't always into anime. Um, okay. I was into like a real dark spot in my life when I was in Korea. Real dark, like the pressure had hit hard. Um. That's a trait with uh, people in the military. Yeah. And somebody was like, hey, so I read you good, I'm, like, I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, admit defeat to anybody. Um, they recommended I watch this. Well, it was Naruto at the time. I'm like, Naruto? I remember those kids in high school running around, acting all weird and stuff. All right, she ain't let us do. I'm sitting in my room, drinking myself to death, so I'm just going to go ahead and watch this anime. And that was in 2015. I haven't stopped watching anime since. <laughs> That's how it goes, huh? <laughs> wow. All right, then. <laughs> No, that's, that sounds like me in comics, dude. I got, when I was a kid, it was the same thing. I had a dark spot. Uh, my mom introduced me to Superman, and, like, I never really looked back. Like, the TV shows helped out a lot, but the, it all goes back to my mom giving me giving me my first comic book when the death of Superman happened. I didn't get that comic in, a, in particular, but it started it. It started, like, you know, the growth of comic books. I never looked back since then. I feel so like I should... Oh, please, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so you're saying your baby hero is Superman? No, my favorite hero okay. was a tattoo all over my body. He's my second favorite, though. My favorite is Batman. I don't care what anybody says. You can call me whatever you want to call me about Batman. I love Batman. I know he's a rich, white dude. Um, I know he has, like, you know, anger issues. He fights a lot of people to get his problems solved. But uh, if you read the comic books, there's reasons for it. And even when he's wrong, uh, he gets called out for it in the comic books. And that's, that's also something I appreciate. That's what I appreciate about reading the Superman comic books also. He's a beacon of hope. But he fucks up a lot, and a lot of bad stuff happened to him on a regular. And it's just you, you see those those struggles, you see like those changes, and that's something that I like. That's like those are the human struggles I care for, not like you know like the the radicalness of the boys. It's that that subtle stuff that I wouldn't I would never cross those lines when it comes to people, even though like I know those characters and the boys were pushed to those points to be like that, like by government agents and things like that. Like you don't see that with uh, the, the DC characters. Like they're, they're seen as gods because that's what they want to strive to be. Like, you know, pure goodness, if that is even a thing, you know? Yeah. And that's that's what I appreciate about those stories. Like Superman, he's an immigrant. Like you can, you can say whatever you want to say. He's an immigrant who was adopted by an American family and he was raised to be American and he knows his heritage, he sees his heritage, and he still, like, he still wants to be an American, he still wants to be human, but, like, he has a lot of, a lot of mental problems also, he has a lot of struggles, because he has three different personalities, he has Kal-El, he has Superman, and he has Clark Kent, Clark they, Kent all, yeah. they all struggle, all the time, and you gotta, like, find out what's, what's right, what's wrong, what he should do, should he get involved, should he not get involved, and Batman's kind of the same way at times, like, he has, like, two personalities, I would say, really. Uh, one that's dormant, which is Bruce Wayne, and one like that he sees as himself, as Batman, and he fights that often. And he likes being alone because his parents are dead, and he blames himself for it. But he has a big family now, and like that family constantly comes and goes because like they have problems with themselves also, just like the rest of the world does. But they all have one goal, which is to make sure the mental illness that they're going through doesn't happen to anyone else. And, like, that's a constant battle that, like, I have with myself. That's a constant battle that a lot of people have with themselves. And, like, I appreciate, like, looking at it through that scope. So I hear what you're saying. Like, with anime, like, say you're doing, like, a different stories and different, like, perspectives, different, like, different, like, situation characters you put in. I hear exactly what you're saying. Naruto is a story about hope. Yeah, it really it really is. Like, Naruto, like, you, you're cheering for that. Even if you don't like Naruto, you're cheering for him the entire time you're watching it. Because you want him to succeed. I hear you, man. And he did. Like, he won. Like, congratulations, Naruto. Like, he lost a lot of friends. 
a lot of bad stuff happened to him. But, like, you know, in, in the end, like, he won. He has a kid. His kid has, like, his own story to tell. And which he's is, Hokage. His, yeah. His goal. That was his goal. The village acknowledges him now. And they didn't when he was a kid, which was really fucked up. It's crazy. Like, your dad being Hokage and then you being under the care of the current Hokage, but you're feeding this, the former Hokage son, ramen, and, like, throwing money at him in a, in a shitty apartment. Yeah. It's, like, very Harry Potter-esque when you really think about it. And, <laughs> and like, and Harry Potter, like, became a badass. Big dog on campus. <laughs> <laughs> and I can respect that. I definitely can. All right. I think uh, I think that's about it. I think we went, like, way past the time we were supposed to go, but it's fine. Uh, this has been fun, man. This has been really fun. I got to have you back on the show again. This is awesome. Just let me know. Tell people where they can find you. You can find me at The Blurred Corner on Twitter and Instagram. And if you're still using that, Facebook. I'm on there as well as The, <laughs> the Blurred Corner. Join the community. Send me messages like my posts. Right now, I'm not on Facebook, but what I'm posting on Instagram should be transferring over. Yeah. If it's not, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm right there, which I completely hear what you're saying, man. All right, and I'm D. You guys know where to find me. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, hit me up. Send me questions. Uh, I post. I will post your questions in a meme format and like have the world talk about it. Like uh, It's always fun doing stuff like that. Uh, I appreciate having you on, man. It's been fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. This is D. You guys have a good one.